join our host for today's Mad Marketing Show, Alex Belding. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you for tuning in to the Mad Marketing Show and for joining us here on Profiles of Success. You can find us by going to our Facebook page, Success Radio USA. You can also go to our website at successradio.com. US. We would like to invite you to register with us there for a free audio book, ebook, excuse me. Um, if you sign up um, for the free account, you will get an ebook as our gift to you. You can also subscribe to this show right there at successradio.us. You can also find us on SoundCloud or wherever else you get to your podcast. Simply search for The Mad Marketing Show. Um, if you are one of those who take success seriously, you can subscribe to our show and really get good stories on successful people that are doing great things in their specific industry. And when we are on the Mad Marketing Show, we're talking to successful marketers. Today, we are super excited to have Forrest Senti in studio with us. He just was a Colorado rising star in Colorado Springs area. And um, here's a quick little blurb for folks listening in and maybe can't see his beautiful face on our Facebook live stream. Um, Forrest is a graduate of the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, with a bachelor degree in marketing and a minor in entrepreneurialism. Since 2014, Forrest has worked for, in and around, several startups, not pro- not-for-profits, and corporations in Colorado Springs in a variety of roles, backgrounds and capacities. His passion lies in building and supporting the idea of his friends, family, and community. Well, Forrest, thank you for coming on to the show today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Alex. Not a worry. Well, and I really wanted to have you on the show because you are a marketing man. You've been all over this town um, working for names like Norwood and Peak Startup and Maxletics. I think now you're with the Center for Cybersecurity. Um, National Cybersecurity. That's yes. that's the name. There it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. and again, doing marketing, I assume. Uh, a little different, actually. Okay. A lot of it uh, is actually mostly project management. Uh, okay, but that's that's kind of where my expertise has gone. Is more in the you know marketing, project management, and project management itself. Nice. Well, and thus the title of our show, right? Managing your marketing yeah. with Forrest Senti. Absolutely. So, um, well, before we really dive into that. Why marketing? What was what was it about marketing that got you so revved up? Yeah. So in the beginning, um, when I was in school, I was, in, I was studying business, looking at different things. Um, the first thing that caught my eye was the idea was the art of selling. You know, if you mm. if you wanted to be a salesman um, in college, you don't necessarily get you know there's no sales degree, right? Uh, you get a marketing degree, mm-hmm. um, and and that was the, kind of the first thing was how do we, um, it, you know, how do we learn how to sell? And a lot of that you know in college comes from you know, personal selling and social media and, you know, how do you build your funnel and all these different things. So that's what got me, you know, excited at first. And, okay. Um, and then uh, I had one class in particular that kind of like tipped the scale for me. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, I think it was marketing 3300. It was about, it was marketing research. Um, Ooh, we had yeah. to, we had to work with uh, local restaurants in Colorado Springs. And so we actually worked um, at what was called restaurant wars where we, you know, one half of the room got this restaurant and the other half of the room got this restaurant and each side of the room had to execute a sales campaign, you know, oh, a one wow. day marketing and sales campaign. And it was, it was neat because what ended up happening was, you know, that side of the room was, I think they had front range barbecue and I had mother muffs right when they first opened. And oh, it, it so had, you, not only were you they're like their neighbors, man. Like, oh yeah. Like they're down funny. the street. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but you know, they had to come up with a creative way to do a Wednesday sales promotion and we had to do the same thing. Um, and it ended up being, you know, a huge amount of fun. We got to meet with the owners. We got to, you know, learn about, you know, restaurant marketing. We got to learn about, you know, how much social media plays into a restaurant's bottom line. And we got to actually execute a sales promotion. That was like the very first time where I was like, Hey, this is actually like, you know, I see the light, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of cool. This is, this is something I could do. This is something I, and, and, and now have done. Right. I Mm -hmm. mean, um, so for those of us that maybe don't know Forrest, um, Forrest, um, is a marketing guy 
but he was also a Colorado Rising star or Colorado Springs Rising star. Um, kind of walk us through how 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 you have had a meteorotic rise in the city. I mean, you are you just you haven't been graduated for that long, and you're already all over the place, and you're crushing it. Yeah, um, kind of explain that timeline to sure. us. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I graduated college in May of sixteen. Um, and when I was graduating college, I'd worked in IT for the past four years. You know, okay. while, while I was in school, my, my, my college job was working in IT. Okay. Um, so I didn't really do any internships. Didn't really, you know, I, I funded my own way through school. You know, mm-hmm. I kind of, I was really, really diligent on making sure I had enough money and that I was doing school. And that was kind of all I was concerned about at the time. Well, when you're about two months out from graduation, you start to look around and you're like, oh my God. The real uh, world. I actually have to get a job. Yeah, now. exactly. Um, and you're and and I realized I really didn't. Even though I was getting a marketing degree, I didn't really have any real marketing experience outside of the classroom. Mm. Um, and some of those like kind of special projects and stuff like that. So um, there was a woman, um, uh, Taylor Rodriguez. She had actually started a company, Peak Social Insights. Okay. Um, and she was doing some social media management for people and doing you know doing some kind of. She was kind of playing with the idea of kind of starting her own business, and then mm-hmm. uh, her and I linked up, started talking and started pursuing the idea of, you know, um, you know, could we actually make a business out of this? Right. And we actually brought in one other person, Sheila and Weed. She was, you know, really big in graphics and stuff like that. So three of us actually banded together around graduation time and we started our own business. Oh, cool. Um, and that was Peak Social Insights. And that was back in about May of 16. Okay. And, and, the, and the, the purpose of that wasn't to make a lot of money. It wasn't to, um, you know, create this big, famous, successful marketing firm. It was literally because all three of us didn't have enough experience to get the job we wanted. And right. we wanted to, the only way we could get the experience we wanted was if we created the experience for ourselves. But you had hustle, you had the go get right. attitude, which you can't teach. And yeah, so we just started doing that. Right. Um, so while we were doing that, you know, I took a job, which was my kind of first, you know, um, social enterprise gig um, at Mountain Equipment Recyclers. So oh, I, fun. Yeah. So I worked there just in with Mike yeah yeah with good old Mike one of my favorite people ever yeah and just worked in a lot of different ways worked in the front worked in the back um did a lot of stuff with you know online sales did you know did some marketing for them too like and and that was a great experience and and in that path Mm -hmm. of working for Peak Social Insights um and kind of getting some clients and working with different people and doing all that stuff and networking and getting involved and doing all that stuff um I got linked up with what is now the Colorado Institute for Social Impact. Okay. Um, it was called, uh, what was the original name? Uh, the, the Coalition That's for, right. Colorado Coalition for Social yes. Impact. Okay. Yeah. When it was CCSI. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, that's when I got linked up with Jonathan and Stacy and the whole crew. And I just started getting involved. I started going to roundtables, started going to the meetings, started going to all different stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and around that time frame, getting involved with them, um, Norwood actually came in the picture as a client for Peak Social. Oh, really? Yeah. So, okay. um Norwood actually came in the picture as a client, and we spent a lot of time bidding for them and doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And at the end of it, and it, you know, it kind of just turned out. They were like, "Hey, why don't, why don't you specifically me? Why don't you just come work here?" Oh yeah. Instead yeah. of us, in, instead of the vendor, right? Instead of a vendor relationship, relationship yeah. let's bring you on as an employee. Yeah. So like, why don't you come work here, be full time, mm-hmm. work in a marketing department, It'll just be you and one other person. You can, you know, we can start to build this out and kind of see where things are going, and and you know, and just start to you know do some work here. Mm-hmm. And thought about it, and decided to accept it. So left Peak Social, left MER, um, and started in Norwood of November. 16. Okay. Yeah. So, and then in working there throughout the year, did a lot of stuff between websites and social media and events, right. um, mm-hmm. managed an intern program, did some property marketing management, did a lot of stuff just kind of all over. And really helped to develop their portfolio on the internet, really yeah. so we, eyeballs I mean, on their properties. God, in six months we built... Um, seven websites managed over 36 social media channels. Nice. We, I mean, 
you know, it, it was just the, the amount of events we did. The we amount were of busy. Stuff, like, yeah. yeah, it was it was a fun year. But that's a lot of experience. What maybe oh, maybe out of that experience, what's something that really sticks with you? Yeah. So the big thing is, is kind of like the theme for this, like the marketing management. Yeah. What does that look like? Um, how do you do that? How do you structure that? having a plan and yes. making sure that yeah. you're not just throwing spaghetti at the wall? Yeah. Right? Well, and, and a lot of marketing is throwing a spaghetti at the wall. Yeah. But having a plan on how, you know, are you going to cup the spaghetti? Right. Are you going to wrap it on your fingers before you throw it? Right. Like, is how, it like, Queenie, or are we going to use angel hair? Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it, that's a that's a really really big piece on it. Mm-hmm. Um, but in that journey of working at Norwood and learning all those things, um, you know, throughout the year, I started getting involved in the startup community. Um, started working with Peak Startup. I mm. met up with Brad and Jan. I participated in two different competitions. Um, uh, tech yeah, right. You've weekend. been involved in a couple of startups like Maxletics. Yep. Um, you have your own startup. Uh-huh. You've got a lot going on. I'm really glad to have you on yeah, the show, man. Fun, man. And you have a lot of experience in managing marketing, right? And yeah. and what that strategy entails. So mm-hmm. um, we're going to dive into that section of the show here after a real quick break. Um, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs> Marina, how is a car like a computer? I don't know. How? If you don't do routine maintenance, they get gooped up and fail early. By performing routine maintenance, your system performance will be improved, keep it secure, and find issues while they were small. Well, Elk Creek Computers will perform routine maintenance on your computers for $99 per system. Call us at 719-576-4122 to schedule an appointment today. This week, my name is Harley Mitchell. Next week, I'm not sure yet. Maybe I'll use your name. You see, I'm a cyber criminal, and I steal information that defines who you are. Things like your driver's license number, your birth date, your home address, your office address, your social security number, your medical information, insurance cards, business licenses, and if I can get it, your birth certificate. If I can get one, I can get the rest. It's not personal. It's just business. Once I have your information, I bundle it with others and I sell it. Not just once, but over and over and over and over and over. Due to recent massive data breaches, your personal information is now available for cyber criminals like Harley to buy and sell to their underworld counterparts for profit. Bad people with bad intentions hiding behind your identity. Don't be fooled and lock down your financial life. Use the professionals that Fortune 500 companies use, ID Shield and Legal Shield. It costs less and reaches further. Don't lock down your life. Call Andrea Wacker and get the right protection for the right problem. Andrea Wacker is your lady of justice. Call now at 719-243-3174. That's 719-243-3174. Programming produced by and for the Internet Broadcasting Network can be found on TuneIn. Be sure to take us with you by using the TuneIn app on all your mobile devices. This is the IV Network. It's 
Power of Synthesis. Yeah, that's right. Hey, we are back. Thank you for tuning in to the Mad Marketing Show brought to you by Profiles of Success on Success Radio USA. Um, really, really excited to have Forrest Senti in the, in the studio with us today. Forrest Senti is a Colorado Springs rising star and a recent grad, well, recent, two years ago, grad of... Um, University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. And uh, today we're talking about managing your marketing, not, you know, what marketing is, but managing the overarching strategy behind it. Um, and before the break, we were chatting about kind of Forest's rise in, in, in town. I mean, it has been quick and it has been successful. And um, it's really exciting to hear about your success stories. Um, right before we went to break, we were talking about um, how with Norwood, you had stood up seven websites in six months and managed 36 different platforms. Yep. I mean, that is a lot to be managing, right? Um, but that you're not done. You're, you're still growing. Where are you now in relation to then? You know, that was a yeah. year ago. Oh, man. Okay. So, well, I left Norwood in January mm-hmm. um, to pursue other opportunities. Wanted to kind of do my own thing, kind of pursue the sports startup world. Had an opportunity to work with Maxletics. Yes. And, and kind of do some stuff with them. Um, I think the biggest thing between where I was at then and where I'm at now is kind of my understanding of project management and kind of, you know, it's kind of entrepreneurial program creation. Like how, to, how, do you, how do you start something from nothing? Right. And um, how do you make sure that there's success mm-hmm. when you leave it, right? That right. you create a process that yeah. runs. The follow on, the follow on success. Anybody, if you're not building something where somebody else can walk in and keep it going, you're not doing your job correctly. Right. Okay. And so you had, you had been doing it a little bit with Maxletics, mm-hmm. but you, you got the opportunity to work for, and I'm going to say it wrong again, the National. Center for Cybersecurity? Close. Oh. National Cybersecurity Center. There it is. Yes. Okay. Yeah. No, uh, opportunity came in knocking, and I love the guys at Maxletics, but man, yeah. this, this was a cool opportunity, and I had to, they had to, I had to go for had it. Had to make a move. So, mm-hmm. And that's been relatively recently, right? Um, yep. I mean, since actually since scheduling you for the show, we were going to talk about influencer marketing. <laughs> yeah. We were going to talk about Maxletics, um, yep. and not that that's not a good show. You know, we could have Brad or Jan on oh, yeah. the Mad Marketing They'd Show. Happily do it. But, um, so let's talk about entrepreneurial processes, um, and specifically how they might relate to our listeners. Um, folks that are listening, you know, probably are trying to make their marketing work. Um, what are some processes that are simple for people to do yeah. but that have a profound impact on their business? So the simplest thing for me that I've always started with, um, for a marketing plan, you can always start with a, with a variety of things. The, the high-level stuff is you have to think in terms of strategic versus tactical. Okay. What is my high-level, soft approach? You know, what what are the values? What is the messaging? What is the tone behind what I'm trying to do? And then on the tactical side of it, how am I actually going to get this done? Okay. You know, like if, if, if my audience is females 22 to 30 that live in this zip code that love to go shopping on Tuesday mornings, how am I going to get to those people? Right. You know, okay. on the high level side, that's one piece where you're like, yeah, this is this is my ideal person. I see them coming into my store. Or I see them coming to my restaurant. Mm-hmm. I see them buying my soft goods. But how am I actually going to get my message to them? Right. And that's where thinking tactically is important. You have to start to I call it a customer pathway. OK, you know, which is, you know, how do we like how does that person what does their daily life look like? Like script their life, you know, so and so person wakes up at 8 a.m. They get ready. They walk out the door. They get in their car. They're driving down the street. What are the things between, you know, waking up and when they're in their car driving down the street that makes them right? You know, what, what are the, what are the different points of contact where you can actually look at that person and talk to that person, you know, not physically, but you know, whether it's digitally or with signage or, um, right. Cause sales is friends. all about interrupting them, right? You have to interrupt right. their, their flow in a way that's not aggressive and salesy, right? but you also have to be salesy. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Right? You, yeah you got to convert. Mm-hmm. So, um, and that, yeah. And it comes from, you know, you just literally start to list out all the different ways you can get to them. In, so that, I, in that pathway, I digital, really like physical, that strategic you know. versus tactical. So, mm-hmm. um, so someone that's just, you know, I, I talk to people all the time through my business that are mm-hmm. just realizing that they need to have a Facebook page or that their website from 2011 isn't doing them any favors. Um, if if they're in that space. Mm-hmm. 
um, what is a good place to start? Do they do they start tactically? Do they start strategically? Do, do you have to do both in tandem? Mm-hmm. Um, how would you maybe go about refreshing a business that hasn't yeah. had a Facebook or a website update in a long time? Sure. So the biggest place to start is start strategically. Mm-hmm. Where, like, if, if you know you're going to shoot an arrow, you should have an idea of where it's going to land. Okay. So, so thinking strategically, think think as high level as you possibly can, and think of all the details that, regardless of your budget or your time or your labor, that you can that you can think through. Stuff like you know who's who is my normal like if you if you're a dentist, mm-hmm. who's my average customer? What's like what's what are the three average customer types that I have? Right, right. Mm-hmm. You know, like, and just think through that. Write it out. It, even give a fake name to it. Like, like, make it very personable. And then think of okay, what are the other ways right now that I'm driving revenue to my business? Is it um, primarily by my website? Is it by the Google ad I once placed six right. months ago? Mm-hmm. Is it off a little op-ed thing that I do in the independent every week? You, you know, like, like where's where the you know where are my high level pieces that are coming from? And then I would look at that, write it all down, kind of almost like storyboard it and think it out loud, mm-hmm. and then set your budget. Okay. Yeah. Because that's, that, that's what affects your tactical It, it stuff. affects your approach. It's right. super hard. So mm-hmm. um, when I was doing Peace Social with Taylor and Sheelan, we, we, we like to talk to people and say, look, we are the masters of the zero budget. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, and they'd be like, ah. I like you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's what I got. You're yeah. like, okay, that's fine. Let's that was going to be my out. joke. What if somebody goes through all the strategy, then gets to their budget and goes, oh, oh there's mothballs and cobwebs in there. Yeah. You're like, what oh, my about? God. Well, the, the biggest thing is, is you got to be found. Right. You got to be found. You got to interrupt. You got to. Yeah. You just got to be found. So like, you know, when it comes to Facebook, when it comes to Instagram, when it comes to your Google places, your Google business account, your, your Bing account, your Apple account, like all these different accounts you have to make and create and manage. And manage. And, yeah. Um, you should have all of them because if one of these is going to drive one customer and it didn't cost you anything but your time to make it, it's worth it. Right. Absolutely um, true. Just, just make all of it. Get all the passwords in one place. You know, make a LastPass account or something and save it all so you don't have to worry about it. And then just start there. That's mm-hmm. what I say. Is like um, me and my girlfriend were working on the idea of, like, what's a marketing baseline? Okay. Like, what does yeah. that look like? Like, like, right. like, like, like make a, one I wouldn't make, make a Foursquare right. account. Yeah. You're like, why? You're like, because that'll boost your SEO maybe. I don't know. Right. <laughs> Probably. Right. Well, and, and it's a way for, like you said, the, the off chance that somebody finds you via these little streams. Well, somebody there. might move here from New York and they love Foursquare. Right. And it's not used here, but no. that doesn't mean that they're not going to check it but out. But all of a sudden you're number one on the list for dentists. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you know, with one check in. Holy yeah. smokes. We're, yeah. we're the king so, of the neighborhood. Yeah. And then, and then uh, the other thing with that too is if it's a zero budget is um, make the time. Right. Make make the committed weekly time. Make it make it part of your like, you know, a lot of people that have been successful and are making money have figured out, you know, kind of a, a routine of some kind that lets them be successful. Right. Whether that looks like they wake up every day at five thirty so they can spend an hour by themselves reading or, you know, whatever. But mm-hmm. and when it comes to social media and websites and you know, just commenting on stuff like there was there's one there's one guy there's a chef um there's a facebook group it's got like seventeen thousand people in Colorado springs um i think it's called 411 for the 719 or something it's a okay. facebook group yep um every time he's on facebook if he sees somebody like hey me and my husband are looking to try a new restaurant anybody have any ideas he's like boom come to my restaurant yeah <laughs> boom come to my restaurant boom come to my restaurant i mean he has literally probably gotten 30 to 50 customers of watching that since the restaurant's been open in right. since february like yeah and that's just a, such a minor thing. it doesn't cost any money it just costs yeah. time yeah it right. just it just costs a little bit of time and, mm-hmm. and at some point when those things s- start converting and making you money then that's when you start looking at vendors right now you can reinvest the profits from your endeavors into getting away from those endeavors right and focus on what you're good at right yeah we call it ga- pouring gasoline on the fire oh I like that you know, where, yeah. where is the fire the fire in this term is, is where is it converting right where are you finding success what is working for you and that doesn't and I like that you have a baseline and you don't have because you talk to some people and they're like oh success is only here you right. know every business needs to do this one simple trick and you buy my webinar. It's regularly two thousand. I'll sell it to you for ninety nine bucks, yeah. and I'll tell you about Facebook. And you're like, uh, 
You know, that, that, that might not work for right. an auto body shop. You know, right. like, <laughs> I've, it'll work for a restaurant. I'm hungry. It's late at night on Facebook, and I'm thinking about where I'm going to take my wife on a date. Tacos. Right, exactly. <laughs> What's trending in hashtags today? You know, like, I do search that, but but that doesn't mean I search for auto body shops there. You know, um, same thing with Twitter, right? It works for some people. It's abhorrent for others. Yep. Um, well, and so... You had mentioned uh, strategic and tactical, basically figuring out your high level stuff, throw budget out the window, and then you can figure out how do you actually achieve that by being tactical, mm -hmm. and that's when you bring in budget. Um, so what you suggested, and I'm just reiterating this because we're up against a break real quick, would be that if you don't have a budget, figure out what you can physically do and make it a process, right? To kind of, mm -hmm. you know, as you manage your marketing, that's about creating processes. And sometimes that process is that you physically have to do it every Tuesday, right? Yep. Absolutely. You just got to do it. So what's the consistency that someone that might have heard that six other times from other people, you know, how often is that consistency? Do they, I mean, because I've heard people with weird ideas about what should be consistently done. Like, I have to write a blog post a day, every day. For, no, you don't have to do that. But what would be a good amount of time to invest on a weekly basis right. in hours? Uh, you know, you could do it as little as an hour a week. There you go. Literally. I think that once you have the setup done, I think you, you could literally spend an hour to two hours a week just getting ahead on it, working it, and being involved in it. Really just being cognizant and aware. Right. Well, the program. time it takes you to listen to the Mad Marketing Shows podcast, you can also do your... <laughs> this is a great time to start. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, perfect. Well, we'll be right back after a short break. We are listening to Forrest Senti, Managing Your Marketing. <laughs> Success Radio USA is always looking for ways to help you succeed. Whether it's offering a word of encouragement or sharing practical information that can give you the competitive edge. So you'll want to pay close attention to this. Our new sponsor, the 365 Grand Club, can give you the edge when conducting business in downtown Colorado Springs. You might want to entertain a potential client or just show appreciation to a loyal business partner. Either way, your new 365 Grand Club card is your passport to downtown Colorado Springs. Your club card gives you access to discounts, business perks, making new business connections, and the convenient private concierge service that makes getting around town hassle-free. Enjoy the benefits of downtown with ease and prestige. Get your club card today by visiting www.365grandclub.com. That's 365grandclub.com. Get yours this week and join the club, the 365 Grand Club. It gives clarity to problem solving. It increases production and focus on the job. It alleviates sleepless and restless nights and fends off stress and tension headaches. No, it's not the latest energy drink or health supplement. It's Legal Shield. Get peace of mind every day, every night, now and forever. Legal Shield. Get it. To find out more about Legal Shield and how it can protect your family and your business, call Andrea at area code 719-243-3174. That's area code 719-243-3174. Legal Shield. Click the Tune In Follow tab and have instant access to your favorite IB programming. IB is your internet broadcasting network.
listening to the Mad Marketing Show on Success Radio USA. I'm your host, Alex Belding, and we are graced with the presence of the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Forrest Senti, um, who is a Colorado Springs rising star and um, has been a marketing man in town for a number of years and is now on to bigger, cooler things like project management and really um, taking, in my opinion, it's, it's just a natural progression, right? I mean, you went from doing the labor of creating the marketing. Now you're doing the labor of creating the processes that allow that stuff to be successful. Um, earlier in the show, you had mentioned that you work with CI for SI um, and do some do some training for them. Um, and then during the break, you had mentioned that you work with them on helping people create a business model canvas. Can you talk more about how that kind of fits into your entrepreneurial processes? Yeah. So a big thing with the Colorado Institute of Social Impact. Um, so I've done two different classes for them um, in the past about how to tell your story. Mm-hmm. And the one I did recently was, you know, um, business model canvas, you know, how do you lay out your business um, on a BMC, which is, you know, all about customer validation. Who's your market? And a BMC stands for business right. model canvas. Correct. Okay, perfect. Yes. I'm, I'm with you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and a lot of it has to do with, you know, kind of external versus internal um, customer validation. It's all about, you know, painting a picture for what your business would look like. And okay. I don't want to miss any pieces of it. So I'm going to pull up the BMC so I can tell you. Oh, fine. Um, but the biggest thing is that from left to right, so you have your key partners. Okay. Uh, you have your key activities, your key resources, your value proposition, customer relationships, your channels, customer segments, cost structure, and revenue streams. So oh, you wow. literally can, on one piece of paper using just sticky notes, you can literally, like anybody listening can type in business model canvas in mm-hmm. Google, hit images, and you can literally just print. What this, you see the, there. What, I'm, what right. I'm talking about. Okay. Um, the difference is that when I did it for Call Institute for Social Impact, we did the Social Impact Business Model Canvas. Okay. Which it changes it just a little bit. Um, a lot of it talks to do with, you know, um, who is your business going to impact socially? Mm. Where is your triple bottom line going? Okay. What, you know, how are you going to be allocating some of your profits? Mm. Um, what, you know, not only are, do you have customer stakeholders and kind of like investor shareholder stakeholders, but you also have the population. You're, yeah, your yeah. impact, your mm-hmm. the population you're serving. Um, so I use that as a way, you know, anybody that's looking to start a new program, if you're looking to start a new business, if you're even just looking to start a new, it can even be a marketing effort, um, literally print out a BMC and just walk through each of those. Right. Because, I mean. And, and flesh it out. Pour some time, yeah. energy, be strategic with it, right? I mean, that's that allows you to set up all of the activities you'll need to do in order to enact that plan. Yep. The business model canvas is the easiest simplest way to kick off a business plan. Okay. And so is it, to me, what I heard there is kind of like a business model light, right? It's, Mm -hmm. you wouldn't take that to a bank and say, Hey, fund this idea. (laughs) They'd like, well, we need way more information. You actually need a true business plan. Mm -hmm. But, um, but you could start here, right? Validate the idea, maybe get some customers Mm -hmm. and then you could come back and write your business plan and then go after funding or you know a loan or or something like that that's right. that's how i would do it that's how i've done it that's how yeah that's this is exactly what you have done for all of your i mean even were you doing this with your prospective clients um back with um your first startup right after college were you helping them yeah with, no perfect yeah absolutely um that was that was a big part of how we do it you know what are our key partners Mm-hmm. You know, like who who are the people we need to go talk to? And so we spent we we found like nine different people. We were like, hey, like we want to. Could you refer us to people? Could you? you know, we're we're a student startup. And we're going to be doing this and this. Yeah. Um. You know, and like so we spent a lot of time doing that, and then we did it for our customers too, um, to make them understand. Right, and what that's a that well, and what what I what I love about that is it's a it's a real understanding of what marketing is because so often people get lost in the promotion and the sale aspect of the push of marketing, you know, and they forget that marketing is the whole enchilada. You know, it goes all the way back to, you know, your product, your distribution, your price, you know, and those things are really important when you're trying to sell something. And if you're having ineffective sales, it may not be that your sales people are ineffective or that your marketing is. It may be that your business model canvas is making wrong assumptions or right. is not strategically sound in a certain area. And that 
problem is foundational to the business. It's it's really part of how it all works. Yeah. No. And in marketing, we call that you know kind of A B testing. Right. You know, this business model canvas is our our A. We're going to mm-hmm. build this, flush it out. I'm going to take some action items away from this. I'm going to go and do a marketing, you know, kind of push, sales push on these assumptions we've made. Mm-hmm. Is it working? Nope. Okay. Maybe it's, B. yeah, plan let's B. try plan okay, B. Okay, let's redo this. Right. Okay, what assumptions did I make? Can I change? Again, and, we're and throwing we're, spaghetti at the wall, but we're doing it. Under the scientific method. Strategically. Yeah. yeah. We're strategic. <laughs> is it Linguini? Is it Alfredo? Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Um, so relating that back into processes, it's all the same thing, right? I mean, if we are trying to automate or streamline or improve our marketing, we have to start maybe at that zero budget where, hey, I have to schedule two hours every week to do this myself. But your passion really aligns with how do you create the process Mm -hmm. so that it can be trained and given to somebody else um, so that you can, again, step away as a business owner. And so what are some things that you, that you really look to? um, And I assume the business model canvas is one of those, but how do you start building processes? If if someone listening today is like, well, I, I think I've got, how to do it myself, but that's not what I, I don't want to do that for the rest of my life. I want to build a process. How do I, how do I do that? Yeah. So the way I've always started is just to write it down. Okay. Well, how are you, you know, how, how are you currently envisioning how you want to do it? You Mm -hmm. know, take that, do it once, think about it, write it down. And then once it's written down, do it again. But as you're doing it, look at your process and go, you know, I don't really need this step two. If I take this piece of tape and I put it right here, Mm Mm-hmm. I can just, you know, I can knock that one out. Boom. Okay, there's 35 seconds. Okay, yeah. nice. You know, and, and you can literally just start to, I, I believe in the 5%, which, you know, can be applied to anything, which is, you know, every single time you do something, try and make it 5% more efficient. Don't don't scrap the entire logistics plan. Right. Um, mm-hmm. But just, just find a really cool, you know, small thing that you can change. You know, is it taking a lot of time for you to click a pen versus twist a pen? You know, would that save you three seconds every single time, you know, which is a few minutes during the course of a day, which is a few hours during the course of a year? Boom. Okay. Guess what? Everyone's getting clicky tops now. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so like it's really, really simple stuff. Um, just, just finding the... Um, um, I took this thing from I think it's called the Y Institute. They have this test. And the, the Y is that the, the letter y, y? The Y Institute. W H Y. The yep. Y Institute. Yeah, okay. it's and it's uh, it, it it said okay, it's like a like a what is your what is your why in life? And it, and it said that my why was to make things simple. Oh really? And I was like, <laughs> that explains a lot. Yeah, because <laughs> my whole life I've always been like, there is a better way. Yeah, yeah. no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no, and there is always a better way. And if you approach everything like there is a better way, then you will be able to find the process. But the but the easiest, simplest thing is just to write it down and to pick a standardized way of showing your processes. If okay. if everything is going to be on piece of paper, printed out on this little. What are they called? Clipboard um, on your wall, and that's where the process is at, and that's mm-hmm. where it's going to live. That's where it's going to live. Mm-hmm. If you want to have a Google Sheet, or you have one through thirty-seven, and anybody can go on there on their phone and look and go, okay, roll uh, number twenty-four. I need to put the screw in, in the right in the wall for. Oh, I got it. Okay, like you know, however you want to do it. Yeah. So basically, be like IKEA, right? Like, yeah. No. Make it a How nice, can you get to IKEA? simple. Right. Yeah. How can you make your processes as simple and as easy to follow, so that you can bring on a hire and have them do what you've learned mm-hmm. themselves? Okay. And accessibility is a big piece too. When you say accessibility, what do you mean? Well, if you're going to bring somebody in and you want them to take over what you're doing, it shouldn't be like this whole effort to get them trained. It should right. be, you know, a fairly easy transition. There should be some areas where, uh, like I believe in creativity, things, you know, some things should be left undefined. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody might have a better way of managing social media than I do. Right. And I want them to manage it in that better way that works for them. People people think in different ways. Like sometimes people are very point A to point B, but sometimes people are very point A to kind of, you know, I'm going to wander over here and look at this and come over there and then now we're here to B. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's 
you know, just just making it accessibility and open, and you have to be willing to teach as well. That's the other thing. It's going to take. It's like a. It's like an exponential curve. Okay. But with like some bumps in the beginning, <laughs> you're going to get really involved. You're going to come back down, and then it's going to kind of start to taper up. If it's successful, and it'll get more time, more time, more time. Then you'll hire somebody, and it'll probably take even more time from the beginning. But then you might see it taper back down to where your involvement's minimal. Okay. Just oversight. The goal is yeah. always oversight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the goal being that you make it as I like that accessibility phrase because that also means that if if your process is all in shorthand and code, that doesn't work. You no. know, you've got to write it out and make it understandable so that it's uh, anybody can come in and, and kind of get started with it. Mm-hmm. Okay, How, what to you? What's like a what's a timeline? Like should should I go straight for the process or should I first get it figured out by myself? And then once I've done that, do I then work to actually write it out? and Or should I start writing it even though I'm starting this today? So I would just start doing it. Okay. Like, if it's something that needs to be done, start doing it. And then the next time you do it, you know, think through it a little more. Be a little more kind of mental about it. Excuse me. Um, and then start to write it down. Yeah. Write down simple instructions. And then read those through. Think if you missed anything. Digitize it if you can. You know, put it on your phone if you can. Do something where you can keep a record, not just handwritten. Because if it's like me, you can't read my handwriting. So if I died, I better, <laughs> I, I better hope that nobody gets this notebook with really right. important stuff in it. Yeah. Um, but and, and then after that, every single time you do it, read that, improve it. Read it, improve it. Everything should always be this constant feedback loop of just continuous improvement. Right, and allowing that feedback loop to exist, right, and yep. allowing the person that is going through the stages mm-hmm. to have some ownership on that. That's that's a good point as well. All about awareness. Well, we are talking with Forrest Senti, who is a Colorado Springs rising star. We're talking about managing your marketing and, and creating those processes. Uh, this has been a great talking point for our listeners out there that might be in this exact spot. Yes. Um, yeah, so stay tuned. We're going to be right back after a short break. How is a car like a computer? I don't know. How? You don't do routine maintenance. They get gooped up and fail early. By performing routine maintenance, your system performance will be improved, keep it secure, and find issues while they were small. Well, Elk Creek Computers will perform routine maintenance on your computers for $99 per system. Call us at 719-576-4122 to schedule an appointment today. Success Radio USA is always looking for ways to help you succeed. Whether it's offering a word of encouragement or sharing practical information that can give you the competitive edge. So you'll want to pay close attention to this. Our new sponsor, the 365 Grand Club, can give you the edge when conducting business in downtown Colorado Springs. You might want to entertain a potential client or just show appreciation to a loyal business partner. Either way, your new 365 Grand Club card is your passport to downtown Colorado Springs. Your club card gives you access to discounts, business perks, making new business connections, and the convenient private concierge service that makes getting around town hassle-free. Enjoy the benefits of downtown with ease and prestige. Get your club card today by visiting www.365grandclub.com. That's 365grandclub.com. Get yours this week and join the club, the 365 Grand Club. Programming produced by and for the Internet Broadcasting Network can be found on TuneIn. Be sure to take us with you by using the TuneIn app on all your mobile devices. This is the IV Network. Success Radio USA. 
Hey, hey, we are back. You are listening to The Mad Marketing Show. I am your host, Alex Belding, and we have Forrest Senti in studio with us today. And Forrest has been talking about the business model canvas, creating processes, and really managing your marketing. Um, but one of the things that's really cool that happened super recently is that you became a rising star in Colorado Springs, or a Colorado Springs rising star. And for those that may not be aware, every year a group of um, individuals throughout the city is it, is, it, is it many as 15 how many people are nominated every year oh it's more it's it's a handful it's not yeah, just I one or two but I it's think there were 37 this year okay but it's a group of people that are really doing well throughout the community in business um, in their specific industries um, under the age of 40 and that are really doing well and so Forrest um, was nominated and was accepted and was given the award this year and I'm, I'm super excited to have you on the show because it, that's an interesting place to be, right? That to have that kind of accolade on you, and to um, what's it like wearing an accolade, like you know, being a rising star? Hey, man, don't screw up. Right. No. <laughs> we're all watching. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're going to catch. We're going to catch you some way. Yeah. No. Uh, no. It's actually it's uh, it's humbling. Okay. Honestly, mm-hmm. uh, it's really. Um, it's it's kind of cool to, um, I mean, sure, yeah, it was awesome, you know, winning and and being a part of that class. But honestly, I was I was exceptionally humbled because the group I was part of was freaking incredible. Right? There's not just two. Or, there's thirty six. No, there's thirty seven, and they were are, all amazing. Right. Um, people that are heads of you know like directors of nonprofits and people who work at the Space Foundation and you know uh, actually one of the Colorado Institute of Social Impact board members is also oh cool one of them like you know like all these great incredible hardworking people um, that I got to you know and, and honestly I think the biggest value of being a rising star was the networking just getting to go and just get to know and talk to these people because when you're a rising star one of the things they make you do is you um, you have to volunteer. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, so there's a group volunteer day. I don't know if that's normal, um, but uh, but this year they had a group volunteer day. So um, so all of us got to go to Care and Share, and we packed boxes and sorted food. And, oh, cool. But the whole time, you're like, I'm, I'm sitting across from Nina Lee, who owns 503 West, and we're, we're talking through, like, oh, you think this spaghetti is good? You're like... Uh, yeah, I think it looks good. Like, okay, you know, and you start going through this whole process. But in doing that, you start to learn so much about these people that you had no idea. Like, right, you know, and that wouldn't have come out in conversation otherwise. Yeah, like, you know, and I've seen Nina at 503 West, but, like, I never, you know, went up and talked to her about, like, how's your dog? How's your, <laughs> how, how's your you know, significant other doing? Like, you know, like, mm-hmm. that, that wasn't, you know, and so it was Well, and getting cool. to know people at that level yeah. is, is pretty slick. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was really neat. That was actually probably my favorite part. And even actually... Um, getting to know the people at the business journal because the, the Car Springs Business Journal is what puts on right, the Rising yeah. Stars. Mm-hmm. So that was actually really cool too. Jen um, Chancellor, who, who or Chancellor, I don't remember if there's an age there, but she um, she puts on the Rising Stars event and she kind of orchestrates the whole thing. Oh, cool. And she did a phenomenal job. So that was really cool just getting to talk to her and you know kind of learn about her background and where she comes from too. Nice. So well, and um, and so what is it? Someone like you that is you know very driven and has some good. Was that kind of networking, getting to meet other rising stars, was that influential to your thought process on managing projects and managing marketing and, you know, that more of that entrepreneurial process that you kind of talked about? In a way, yeah. Um, I, I think what's, what was really beneficial for that there um, really was just getting to see how, you know, theoretically, if you look at all 37 of us. Mm-hmm. Right. All of us got to this specific moment in our lives in completely different ways. Right. Completely different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, some people have been doing their own thing since they were 18. Some people, you know, have worked their way up and struggled and fought and come from really tough backgrounds to get to where they are. And and some people have been de- deserving of this for probably 15 years. Yeah. And finally, and they finally got it, you know, and, and, and that was actually what was the big thing with talking about the entrepreneurial processes and the marketing stuff was sometimes you just got to do it. Right. And the, and these people, that was my, that was actually, you know, I I talk about the humbling thing and meeting these people and stuff, but my favorite thing about all these people that they were doers, Mm 
Right. Like these, the, this is the doers of the city. And, and every year you get to really see like who, who are the doers. And it's not movers and shakers. It's not the wealthy. It's nothing like that. It's who are the doers. Right. And who's actually getting out there and, and doing the work that needs getting to be done. Getting it done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and, um, and, and kind of, relate to a point that I always love to make in marketing is that it is, it's, it's ant work, right? I mean, we, th- we think it's these big, grandiose, massive things, but it's the slow and steady plotting of moving little tiny grains of sand every day that eventually makes the pyramid, right? And I think people get lost especially from the spectacle of looking at larger enterprises that have come out of digital marketing um, for a myriad of different other reasons. You know, they think that, oh, it's just one big event, flash in the pan, boom. But, you know, you don't get to see all of the small detail work that goes into creating the process and creating the consistency and doing, right? That's yep. totally true. Well, that's kind of fun. So um, of the folks that were there, um, did you know anybody? Or was it a whole group of people that you had never really met? Um, was there any of your colleagues that were there? Yeah, I, I knew a few people that were there. Um, actually, a really good friend of mine, uh, Jeremy Shirley, he was one of them too. He's a broker over at uh, Olive Group, and he's been doing a lot of mm. really really good stuff like he's been in real estate since he was like 19 like he's he, he's one of those people where I was like he should have won it like yeah. five You're years here? ago what the like, heck? He like, didn't you win it like in when you, were you born is this like 94 like you won in 94 yeah. like um but uh like like him and I had we had a, we had a really good time we got cuz we got to choreograph our own dance Oh, oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. So we, so me and him, like, we like choreographed it with the event planners and everything. So like, we we did the dirty dancing song with Patrick Swayze. Oh, nice. Where they, when like I caught him in the air, like honest. Oh, it was a blast. <laughs> nice. It was so much fun. So that was cool. But, <laughs> Too yeah. fun. And that was at the party, I assume. Yeah, not, was not while you were volunteering. That wasn't just random. At, like, you know, uh, they kept jumping in my arms. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No. Too fun. Um, well, for for folks that might have missed it, um, you said it's the CSBJ or the Colorado Springs Business Journal. Correct. Is there a full um, article uh, write up on each individual? Do they? Yeah. Is it multiple mm-hmm. issues or is it just one issue? It's, it's one issue. Um, is it already in print? Has it is. It, okay. It is. It is in print. Um, and they can also go to csbj.com, yeah, I think, right? I think they can go online and read it if they wanted to read about me. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it was good. It was, yeah, it was a good article. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're 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 handling the, the the crown well, man. I mean, it is a big it's a big thing to be told. That's a a wonderful thing to have a have a have accomplished. I mean, and it, I think it really speaks to your abilities and your. Your doing itness, if you will. Am I, am right. doing, I'm going to get doer tattooed on my chest. Doer, yeah. <laughs> All one word. <laughs> but I, anyway. I was telling the CEO of NCC, I was like, I'm going to get doer on my chest and food. Oh, like, nice. Like this. Like, you know, just big. <laughs> right there in the What center. do you love? Food. Food. I'm all about the food. <laughs> well, um, again, thank you so much for coming on the Mad Marketing Show. It's been a pleasure to, ha- pleasure, a pleasure to have you. Um, for those that are tuning in, we've been talking with Forrest Senti, who has um, really, like I said, had a meteoric, I can't say that word right, um, a quick rise. I mean, you have done amazing work as your as an entrepreneur. You've worked for the Norwood Conservancy Group. You've worked for Peak Startup and the Colorado Institute for Social Impact. I mean, the laundry list of things that you have done. Maxletics, um, you have your own startup called um, Linted, which we didn't even discuss because <laughs> that's a whole yeah. show right there. Yeah. But um, really, really glad to have you on um, and talk about managing marketing and creating processes and understanding that it is all just throwing spaghetti at the wall, but having that scientific approach and understanding that you've got to tweak it and think about it. Um, any final parting words of advice for the DIY crowd out there that is realizing that they've got to start focusing on the digital space and their marketing? Um, anything that we haven't discussed today that you think is a good tidbit to talk about? Yeah, uh, I think the biggest thing is to not be intimidated and don't be afraid. Okay. Um, I, I didn't know much, you know, going into everything and, and getting hands on and getting dirty and spending my random Wednesday evenings, Thursday evenings, just getting on my phone, sitting in bed or at a coffee shop or at a bar, even depending on what the night, you know, was and just reading about, you know, just just like those questions that you want to ask, like somebody like me or or your marketing friend. Mm-hmm. Just literally just Google it and start reading the top three, four or five articles that come up and just read right. and get that domain knowledge of what it means to, you know, how do you set up a social media strategy? Mm-hmm. Um, like, how do you do that? 
Type right. it in. How to set up a social media strategy. Right. You know, um, Hootsuite, uh, Sprout Social, HubSpot, like all have insanely good blogs that I learned from when I was like okay. having yeah. to set things up. So like, yeah. don't be afraid to go out there and just start to research those questions that you have. You know, like yeah. like business model canvas. Like you can you how to use a business model canvas. Right. And you'll find 19 different articles on different ways you can take it in different directions and get educated. Right. And, yep. and take take the time to learn. Um, one of the one of the takeaways that I took from your talk today was you got to be found, right? So you got to start. You can't wait until it's perfect. You can't be afraid that it's not perfect. So I can't do anything because um, it's kind of like homework. You know, if you're, oh, I can't do this math problem, I'm not going to turn my homework in. Well, you do that a couple of times and now you're never going to get a passing grade in the class um, exactly. and you're not going to master the knowledge. You're not going to be able to pass the class. Mm-hmm. Right. You have to you have to try. You have to put the effort and the commitment of actually doing something, um, which is super, super intimidating. I can totally understand from the standpoint of folks that are just getting started or maybe have been in business for so long and you know they've never had to be in this place before and now they want to do business with younger people how the heck do I talk to those people it's always been done this way and this way doesn't work anymore you know yeah um, and we do find ourselves at like a really interesting cross point in in history where you know the internet is ubiquitous but it's also an infant you know I mean it's such a fast rise of something that we use every day and yet is changing all the time. Um, Well, Forrest, if people wanted to reach out and maybe talk to you and learn more about you, the best way would probably be through the CSBJ and the rising star issue. Um, They can also connect. Can they connect with you via um, the, the national cybersecurity center? Probably, probably not. Uh, The easiest way if you want to get in contact with me, probably just go on Facebook or LinkedIn and just type my name in. Yep. Find them on, on LinkedIn or Facebook. Um, Definitely be sure if you're a local in the Colorado Springs area, or if you're not, go to csbj.com and find Forrest Senti, and that's S-E-N-T-I, right? Yep. I did it right. Okay. (laughs) I was like, was that right? That was right. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And Forrest is spelled exactly as you would spell it, right? With two Um, R's. Oh, with two R's. Okay. And... um, And from there, you know, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a blast to have you. Um, Yeah, thanks for having me. Folks out there listening, you have been listening to the Mad Marketing Show. I'm your host, Alex Belding. Today we had Forrest Senti in studio. And you've been listening to us on Success Radio USA. You can find us by going to our website at successradio.us. Be sure to register. You'll get a free ebook when you do so and that is a gift on us um, but by registering you can tune into the show whenever you want and um, have also an archived database of all the previous shows if you're a podcaster you can find us on soundcloud itunes wherever else you get your podcasts and just simply search for the mad marketing show you can also visit us at madcrane.com again thank you so much for tuning into the mad marketing show have a mad mad day you have been listening to the Mad Marketing Show on Success Radio USA with host Alex Belly. Brought to you in part by the 365 Grand Club, Colorado Springs' only elite urban downtown club. So start enjoying the benefits of downtown with ease and prestige. Get your club card today by going to 365grandclub.com. That's 365grandclub.com. God bless you and see you all next week on the Mad Marketing Show right here on Success Radio USA. Success Radio USA is always looking for ways to help you succeed. Whether it's offering a word of encouragement or sharing practical information that can give you the competitive edge. So you'll want to pay close attention to this. Our new sponsor, the 365 Grand Club, can give you the edge when conducting business in downtown Colorado Springs. You might want to entertain a potential client or just show appreciation to a loyal business partner. Either way, your new 365 Grand Club card is your passport to downtown Colorado Springs. 
Springs. Your club card gives you access to discounts, business perks, making new business connections, and the convenient private concierge service that makes getting around town hassle-free. Enjoy the benefits of downtown with ease and prestige. Get your club card today by visiting www.365grandclub.com. That's 365grandclub.com. Get yours this week and join the club, the 365 Grand Club. Programming produced by and for the Internet Broadcasting Network can be found on TuneIn. Be sure to take us with you by using the TuneIn app on all your mobile devices. This is the IB Network.